1993. This is a funny one. I like older women, so I would lie about my age a lot. And this doesn't allow me to do that anymore. Because they'll be like, 1993, what's that? And I'll be like, uh, I don't know anything significant other than me being born about 1993, you know? So I it holds me, <laughs> it keeps me honest when I'm trying to talk to girls. <laughs> California and that's actually what made me like really like love like the culture of tattoo is because you know you show up and it's 24 hours for all of Friday the 13th and it's like you know hundreds and hundreds of people lined up to get these little $20 tattoos I don't know if you've ever read Mad Magazine but him and his brother always are like trying to kill each other and my brother has the uh the one that's all black holding a bomb on his leg. So we got these in Venice Beach together. Um, so I really like this one. We got the uh, LA. I used to skate a lot. So I got the, you know, the LA with the skateboard for the bottom of the L with the skyline behind it. And then uh, I got this savage tattoo. Me and three of my friends have that and we all tattooed them on each other. So that's kind of like a sentimental thing. And then, okay, I got this by a good friend of mine, Paul. Paul Galan, he's an amazing artist. And I was just at his house and uh, I picked up a painting and he had been telling me he had done some apprenticeships and stuff like that. I was like, well, you should tie me up sometime. Like, whatever you want to do, let's do that. Like, whatever you want, I will let you tattoo it on me. And he was like, okay, cool. And then I found the rough draft. He had this as a painting, a huge canvas painting in his room. And I found the rough draft of it. And I just held it up to my arm and I was like, we should tattoo this. And he was like, I'm down, let's do it right now. And we sat and like just did it right then and there. Um, and it took two years for him to be like, okay, I'll do the shading now. And honestly, it, by the end of it, I was just cussing him out because tattoos hurt. Like tattoos really hurt, you know? So this is the first tattoo I ever got. I was 16. Um, my mom had just passed away. And I convinced my grandma to take me to get a tattoo. And it's her name with a rose and the day she was born and the day she passed. To be honest, it's not that good of a tattoo. It's really not. But I love it more than all of them because it's like my mom, you know, like, like I'm always thinking about her. And I love it and I'll never change it. Yeah, because this is the first thing I got in this arm. It says, we're all mad here. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it says, we're all mad here. It's from Alice in Wonderland. Honestly, I don't know. I was like, yeah, we're all mad. I was like early in sobriety and I was just like, didn't care. And honestly, I forget it's there half the time and I don't think about it, but it's not my favorite tattoo. I could go without it at this point, to be honest. It's a bowler hat with wings and it says, take these broken wings and learn to fly. It's a Beatles quote. I got that because my dad was like, showed, you know, my dad is, used to be a hippie and he was super cool and like, ran away, went to Woodstock, and intro just introduced me and my brother to all this amazing music, you know, like the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, The Who, all these people, and like, I was, I think of him because, you know, I'm, I love that music now, and it's thanks to him, and I, you know, I don't think I would have, I saw how passionate he was about that kind of music, and it made me love it even more. This was uh, my homie senior quote. Um, he passed away right before the school year ended. Live as if you were to die tomorrow, learn as if you were to live forever. Uh, and then I kind of started to like really like tattoos and you know like study them a little bit and I got into the whole traditional um, color traditional uh, side of it and you know I got a pinup girl this is actually on the back of a Sailor Jerry bottle and it says steady as she goes I got this when I first got sober and it's just like reminds me you know like just no matter what's going on, you know, like it'll pass and like, you'll be good, you know? Um, just keep your head up and keep, keep going. And then I got the anchor on the back of my arm 
And that's for like the people that keep me grounded, the people that I surround myself with that keep me, you know, that keep me where I'm supposed to be headed. Who would that be in your life? Um, my brother, uh, a couple of really good friends that I got sober with, you know, we've been sober for like five years, you know, and we're like all just super close. And we, we check each other and we make sure we to call each other out when we know one of us isn't going too good. And then I got my elbow. This hurt so bad. Like when I got done, it was the size of a tennis ball on my elbow, but it's a compass. And um, you know, it's just the direction, like where are you trying to go in life? Uh, what path are you trying to take? You know, just make sure that you always like, you know, you're, you're not lost. You always know, like you always have some sense of direction of what you're trying to do. Um, and then, I got this, this is a, a crack in battling a ship and it's like the battle of life and like, you know, the struggles and things you have to overcome. And just to remind you that you're stronger, you know, like you can overcome pretty much anything unless you tell yourself you can't. That's like, that's my whole mentality is that you can do anything unless you tell yourself you can't. I got the dagger. I got the dagger for, uh, you know, the, the stuff you've been through, like, you know, like the things that have affected you most in life and like to use them and, you know, make, to, to remember those feelings and, you know, uh, motivate them and uh, motivate you and stuff like that. And then I have the Grim Reaper and it's like the result, the result if I forget this stuff, you know, like what will happen to me if, you know, if I don't stay sober or like, you know, forget what I'm trying to do. It's just like, it just won't turn out well for me. And that's all I know. Okay, my stomach. I get a lot of questions about this. I get a lot of questions. It says dress sexy at my funeral. I was 18 again. And I just had this whole like, I don't care what happens to me. I like, like, oh, let's do drugs and party. And like, that was cool with me, you know? And like, when I die, I don't want people to like, like, yeah, you can feel a little sad, but like party in my honor, you know what I mean? Like go to my funeral, like look fucking good, get a girl and like, you know, just like have fun, you know? I like just know that I live my life and I had fun too. And then I have this guy who is dressed sexy whenever my funeral is. Okay, I have a mustache tattooed on my finger. <laughs> I don't know why. I think I saw it in a video and I was like, oh, that's really funny. Um, and a lot of these tattoos I got when I was 18 and I was always like, I'll be 18 forever, it's all good. And I'm not 18 anymore, and this is stupid, but I love it, you know, because like people see it and they're like, oh, we like show up tonight. And I do, and they laugh, so that's okay. Um, okay. It says fucked, F-U-C-T. I was just with my homie one time and he was like, let's go get lip tattoos. Uh, and this girl I knew said she wanted it, so I got it first. <laughs> and that's why I have that on my lip. My mom hated them. She, she didn't want me to have any. And the first thing I got was of her. My dad was just like, oh, these are stupid. And then at the ripe age of 64, he got his first tattoo for the Grateful Dead. So, can't say anything now. Even me having tattoos, I look at somebody who's like completely blasted. I'm like, I don't even want to talk to them. Like, you know, it's weird. It's funny. I think it's funny to me. I think it adds an extra, like, it adds the persona of badass to who you are, even if it's not the case, you know?